92.9 Dave FM, The Cure. Hey, it's Mira Davis. I'm very excited. In studio, please welcome the Indigo Girls. Hi, Amy. Hey. Great to see you. Good to be here. And hi, Emily. Hey, Mira. It is so terrific to have you for your Atlanta homecoming. Yeah, it's good to be home. We've been around. I'm sure it feels different when you come home to Atlanta doing interviews and doing stuff. It's like, ah, oh, we're home. It does feel that way. We know our way around. It's just yeah. great. We, we drive, drive ourselves. ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> I know no entourage, really. You right. just sort of pop in. Yep. Okay, so I want to get right into Poseidon the Bitterbug. Tell me a little bit about how you got the name for the album. Well, the, re the name came from just um, a couple of different songs. We took a word out of one song and a word out of another. Poseidon's from Emily's song. Bitterbug's from one of mine. And our producer was... Uh, just kind of Mitchell Froome, he was laughing about how dark the record was, actually. Oh, really? He's like, oh, this record's so heavy. It's not that heavy, but, you know, it was like the beginning of the project before we were used to it. And uh, he said, you know, you should call it Poseidon and the Bitter Bug or something. And we thought it was funny, but then we went back to it and used it. So it, It's a very catchy title. It is unusual. And great artwork, too. Yeah. Yeah, we, the artwork's We felt like the great. art would, we could get good artwork and... A couple of friends of ours did it. Okay, so you, amazing. you guys have mentioned that it's a very dark record. <laughs> it's not that dark. Well, my, my songs are pretty, I mean, my songs are really pretty world-weary. They really are, except for the one, What Do You Like? But Okay, but you guys are, you, you know, you're snapping out of it. We're okay. It, it's okay. A, it's musically light and lyrically, uh, you know. Well, that's good. Contemplative, maybe. Express what you're feeling. Reflective. I always do. So now you're back to performing. You're back in the game. Even though you never really stop, you two are always touring. Yeah. We took some time off in the fall, and then um, I took a trip to Southeast Asia for a month, which was great. Just some personal time, and Amy released and her I third on solo tour. record. <laughs> yes, we spoke Amy about that. And you and worked. I played. And so when you go on that kind of trip, Emily, are you in like five-star hotels or are you camping? No, you know you can. You know, parts of Asia are very inexpensive. Not camping, no youth hostels. <laughs> and we did stay at the Mandar in Oriental once. Okay. But I mean, seriously, you can go stay at a lovely B and B in uh, Chiang Mai, Thailand, for thirty bucks a night. So it's, it's, and then you just all we wanted to do was eat noodle soup. So that was about it. Now, do you get recognized when you're overseas like that? No, not, not at all. I think the only other country I was recognized in was Canada once. <laughs> <laughs> well, God love those Canadians. Yeah, yeah. God, they're awesome them. for that. <laughs> okay, so you guys just came back from doing a show at two, was it two shows at South by Southwest? Yeah, and you did a surprise performance at the Perez Hilton yeah. show, yeah. and all these rumors were going around about you performing with Kanye West. Now, let's say, no, obviously I wish we had. If, if, <laughs> if your manager came to you and said, "Girls, I got an idea." It's a conceptual, rapping, folking. Would you be open to that? We would say, how are you going to make that happen? <laughs> <laughs> totally. I mean, we're into mixing it up. That's the kind of, we're a bar band. That's the way we started. We always liked hybrid experiences. And so we'd have someone from a punk band come up and join us and a folk singer and a keyboard player and a rocker and just mix it up. We've always enjoyed that. And so you guys had a great experience at South by Southwest. Oh, it's fun. That festival's great, you know. It's just music everywhere. It's great. And you were very, very well received, and uh, so uh, I, I don't. I want to keep on talking to you all day, but I definitely want to hear you perform live. <laughs> I'm excited to hear that acoustic, and and I keep reading that there's two different versions of your new record, uh, acoustic and electric. Why did you have the idea to do that? Uh, that was Mitchell, the producer's idea, Mitchell Froome, and we knew that that's something our fans would like. A lot of our fans like mm -hmm. to hear just us acoustic and. It was an opportunity for them to hear the arrangements of the songs with the band, with the rhythm section, and then to hear them just stripped down as they would be right after Amy and I had arranged them together. So, And it was easy enough to do. We got dropped by Hollywood Records. We became completely independent. We felt very liberated. Woo independent! Yeah. Yeah. Indigo Girls, independent! <laughs> they got the Jonas Brothers, and we got our freedom. It's all good. So, um, but we had to make the record quickly for budgetary and, and time reasons too. So the drummer only had four days, so we cut ten rhythm tracks in four days, and then finished that record up. And then Amy and I just sat around a bunch of mics and did the acoustic versions. So it was cool. Well, you both make it sound so easy. 
<laughs> I mean, really, you just come in here and it sounds absolutely effortless. Uh, we're in the studio with the Indigo Girls. I want to go ahead and take a quick break, if you guys don't mind. And what we're going to do is, um, can you play another song for us? Yeah. Okay. I'd love to. And um, we have uh, probably your number one fan who uh, I've given a little project to. So she has a couple questions she wants to ask you as okay. well. So we'll do all of that right wow. after the break. We're in studio with the Indigo Girls. Yay!